I was taught that diabetes has specific complications, retinopathy, kidney disease, myocardial infarction. Then when I started seeing patients, they had lots of other things as well. They had depression, cognitive impairment, more infections. Collectively, these things were called comorbidities, as if they were connected, but not really. I have always wondered whether that is true. And the only way to find that out is to measure basically everything you can think of in people with and without diabetes. Only then can we begin to understand how diabetes, which after all is a systemic disease, affects the health of people throughout. This is the mission of the Maastricht study. The Maastricht study was an initiative, a joint venture between CARIM, uh, our Faculty of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences, our Maastricht University Medical Center and the province of Limburg. We decided uh, in 2010 to enroll 9,000 uh, individuals from the southern part of the Netherlands and to study them, deeply phenotype them and also gave them some lifestyle advice when they, they left the study. Deep phenotyping is done by performing a lot of measurements. We collect data about cardiovascular disease, lifestyle, body composition, neurological disease, but also other diseases. In the research center we have more than 30 different measurements that we collect. We are also collecting a lot of data on the environment, on walkability, on green space, on sports facilities. Only then can we begin to understand how behavior is influenced by such variables. Now, more than 10 years later, we have seen more than 9,300 participants. We are now in the second round of phenotyping, where people who were with us uh, over the past 10 years actually re-invited for follow-up measurements to see basically how organ function and structure have changed in the, on average, seven to eight years of follow-up. With this data we can perform very nice uh, research and in the end of course it is important that we can improve the treatment of pre-diabetes, diabetes or cardiovascular disease. Using the data of the Maastricht study, our results sh uh, showed that worse glucose metabolism status and higher levels of glycemia are associated with nerve damage in the cornea. The nerve damage could be also in the rest of our bodies and that the observation of the corneal nerve damage is an early uh, stage of that. We have seen in the Maastricht uh, study data uh, consistently uh, that increased arterial stiffness is associated with uh, neurodegeneration in the eyes and in the legs, irrespective of where we take the measurements. In type 2 diabetes, the small and large vessel damage is generalized. It is present throughout the body. Brain health, and this is what the master study data are showing us, is consistently affected in any way you can measure it by type 2 diabetes. We actually have data that show that people who do well on hyperglycemia, high blood pressure, healthy diet, physical activity, do better in terms of less risk of late life depression, less risk of dementia. One of the most important results is whatever we find in type 2 diabetes is actually already there, but less severely in what is called pre-diabetes. How hyperglycemia damages blood vessels and the nervous system is not completely understood. But the biochemical pathways that link high blood glucose to this damage are an area of active investigation. We think that a metabolite of glucose called methylglyoxal is important in causing cellular damage in people with high blood glucose. We have used samples from the Maastricht study, from the biobank, to measure methylglyoxal in the Maastricht study. And we found indeed that methylglyoxal is directly linked to vascular complications. It's increased in type 2 diabetes, but it is also increased in pre-diabetes. So the next step is an intervention study to lower methylglyoxal, and we are able to do that with 
pyridoximin. So the Maastricht study uh, has been really established now in an international way. And we see that the study becomes more and more valuable each year when more research groups make use of this important study uh, for their own research objectives. And the more data that we acquire within this population of patients, the more valuable this will become. I think that what we call comorbidities are not comorbidities at all. They are true complications of type 2 diabetes in exactly the same fashion as myocardial infarction is. If we want to prevent the extensive vessel damage and neurodegeneration that we consistently see in type 2 diabetes, it is my strong belief that pre-diabetes is the time when we should act. Early intervention must be key. We are developing the genetic data collected in the master study to more closely approach the question of whether all these associations that we see are truly causal. Second round of phenotyping that we are currently engaged in will show us what are the determinants of people who actually do better in terms of organ function. Those are the questions for the next five years.